Hi, have you ever seen this meme that says, I'm sorry, I wasn't myself. I was just hungry. Probably written by someone who was hungry, ignored it, crossed over to hangry, and then now that place led them to doing something that led to the meme. And I'm sure it's pre pretty relatable to you, but it's also relatable in other ways. Have you ever found yourself simping because you wanted that person to like you so bad? You just kept calling them and texting them and they never really initiate anything. You are always the one calling fast, texting fast and, you know, running every time they call you because you just wanted them to like you so bad. Have you ever found yourself disobeying God because of that very desire to be liked and to be loved and to be wanted and to belong and to be respected by a certain group of people? And usually we find ourselves doing things that are out of character with or rather out of the character that God would want us to have because of a certain hunger that we have that starts to drive us and it's like when you come back to your senses you're like what was i doing what was that about and the bible has a very simple way of explaining that in proverbs 27 7 where it says he who is full loads honey you're not really moved about by stuff when you're full would you want some candy no i'm good Oh, would you want some extra dessert? No, I'm full. I'm fine. You know, it's it's great. I'm okay. Super. But to the hungry, even that which is bitter tastes sweet. If you have found yourself simping or doing any of those things, you 100% understand how you can reach a point of hunger where that which is bitter and sweet is completely indistinguishable to you. And we might joke about this and make light of it, but there's a seriousness to this because it can cost you your calling. It can cost you a lot. This very thing took down two kings in Israel. And I'll mention them here today. There was Saul and Jeroboam. And I'll paint the picture of Saul a bit differently the israelites wanted a king and the lord picked saul and samuel went and anointed saul and how was saul debuted to the people he was chosen through lot so there's a way they used to speak um people by lot in 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 the ancient israel Kind of like how Jonah was picked by Lot, where whoever picked the shortest stick, that was the bad potato, throw him overboard kind of a thing. So it's kind of like a chance thing. And Saul was picked by Lot. So the whole nation of Israel, just here, there's this dude. Who's Saul? Who's this guy that God has appointed? They didn't know him. He was God appointed. He was not man elected. He was not picked by popular vote. Who knew him? Probably his siblings. You know, maybe a girl who had a crush on him knew him. He was just known in his hood. And suddenly, he's a king everywhere. And this might have been the reason Saul had such a desire to be liked by people. This guy, God wanted to give the Israelites victory over the Amalekites. And God told them told him specifically when you go into war destroy everything i have given the amalekites into your hand destroy everything everything and he kept the choice animals and he also took their king agag and you can find this story in first samuel 15 you can go and read all of it it's super interesting so he took these guys and god told samuel this guy has done this and Samuel actually saw the seriousness of this disobedience to the point where he cried all night. 
I don't know if you've ever cried all night, but you can imagine how serious this was for an old man to cry all night. And he wasn't being overly dramatic, guys. No, no, no. It was a serious thing. And on questioning Saul, first he dodged, just like, no, I wanted to sacrifice to God because why not? It's the choice things. And while Samuel was firm with him is when he confessed that the guys had let me just read it for you, verbatim what he said. Um, he said, in verse 24, I have sinned, I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the people, so I gave in to them. So probably his men were like, oh, let's not live here with something. And he chose their favor over the favor of god he didn't want to say no to them this is the king they probably would not just be like oh we don't want to be in your company but he really wanted to be liked to be accepted to be favored in the eyes of his subjects and even after samuel was like today the kingdom has been torn from you listen to what saul said so you can see where his his heart was he said, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elders. You can still see where this guy is. We've had this conversation in private. Yes, I know the kingdom is taken, but please honor me before the elders. Don't leave. At least before them, I haven't lost faith. He did something similar um, during the Philistine war where he wanted to obtain favor from the Lord before going to war with the Philistines. And Samuel was to come offer the sacrifice within seven days, and the guy was a bit late. And the people started to depart from Saul. So what did he do? He decided to offer the sacrifice himself. And the scriptures actually say immediately he was done. Samuel came and was just like, what have you done? And he was like, oh, I wanted to seek God's favor. And you can see that guys are starting to leave. The situation isn't good. And that's the very thing that cost him his kingship, that he valued the people's favor, their opinion, and their love and affections and all that over the favor of God. He would have rather been in their good books than being in God's book, good books. And you can see where it's coming from. How else am I supposed to have favor in their eyes? Nobody knows me. I'm trying to prove myself. Can't you see? I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to get this promotion. I'm trying to make a name for myself. And he ended up being disobedient. And Jeroboam did something similar. Solomon's son, Rehoboam, was extremely cruel. And the people grumbled and all that. And God sent some guy to now speak to Jeroboam. And he gave Jeroboam, uh, told Jeroboam to take 10 pieces of cloth to represent 10 tribes that he would be given to be king over. And because that's when Israel was splitting. So he would get 10 tribes. And this was something that was given to him by God. So he took the 10 tribes and became the king of the Northern Kingdom. And then Rehoboam remained the king of the south, but the temple was in the south, in Jerusalem. And the Israelites were to go to worship in Jerusalem only at the temple there. But Jeroboam said, or thought to himself, if I let these people go worship God in Jerusalem, they might, while at it, they might be wooed again by Rehoboam, and decide to stick there with him. So how can I prevent people from going back? I have an idea. I will create two altars for worship here in the Northern Kingdom at Dan and Bethel. If I create an alternative place for them to worship, they have no need going to the Southern Kingdom. And hence, I cannot lose them to Rehoboam over here. And the altars he created at Dan and Bethel became the centers of idolatry in the northern kingdom. And it was so bad that the Bible actually says there was not even one righteous king in the north. 
And this is because this dude did not want to lose his people to Rehoboam, that was an extremely mean person. God had already given him the tribes. All he needed to do was make sure these guys worship. He was not secure in that. He did not want to lose the people's affection, loyalty. So he did something that led to generations of idolatry and eventually led to the fall of the northern kingdom so you can see how your need for love and affection or rather your fears for your fears of abandonment of loss of love of loss of respect can actually lead you to doing some really really dumb stuff and you might be wondering, so how can we escape this trap? Because if you are somebody who is employed, you might find yourself doing stuff at work to your colleagues, doing stuff for your boss or to your boss that you would not have done in an attempt to make a name for yourself. If you're a minister or teacher of the word and the Lord puts a message on your heart, speak about this. But you know the thing that the Lord has told you to say is going to empty the pews. It's not going to bring people back. It's going to rub people the wrong way, whether that's you as a minister or as a coach. You, unless you are affirmed, you will end up not seeing that message. You will choose having people in your seats. You will choose having the favor of people over, over having the favor of God. You'll be like, you know what, God, they can find that in a YouTube video. Even as a parent, if you're afraid to tell your child no, this thing can actually affect you in very many different ways. And the only way is to get it satisfied, to get your needs, which are good needs. There is nothing wrong with wanting love, belonging, acceptance. But where you want them from matters. Not everybody's acceptance is a blessing. And not everyone's rejection is a curse. Ask Saul. He chose the acceptance of the people and that did not go well for him at all. Jeroboam's did not go well for anybody. Generations suffered because of his fear. Imagine that. And it's about getting your needs satisfied, getting yourself affirmed from the right place. Get yourself affirmed in Christ, affirmed in God. And... This might look, sound a little bit cliche to you, but let's take a look at Jesus. Jesus also wasn't particularly popular with the big boys of the day. He really didn't say stuff that favored them. But if we backtrack, when Jesus was baptized, I'm not saying this is the first time he was affirmed. The Lord said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. He was affirmed in that moment. You're my son, one, and I am pleased with you, two. And that was enough. When he went into the wilderness, which is the one thing the devil tried to pick at, which was the area of his calling, the place he had just been affirmed, all the temptations of Jesus, if you are the son of God, do this. If you are the son of God, do this. If you are the son of God, do this. Why don't you prove yourself? Hmm? Prove it. And Jesus is like, I have nothing to prove. I've already been affirmed and accepted. In the secret place, I'm good. I'm not doing that. And even when you are affirmed, you will still get tempted. But you will have gotten the covering and the tools and the armor not to fall to that temptation. So get affirmed, get mentored, get a coach, get a counselor, get an accountability buddy who you every time... You feel like simping, you call them, you're like, I didn't, I didn't return that call. I didn't pick up. Please, anything you do, don't let this go unaddressed until you are in a place where you're reaping the consequences of a full grown tree that you could have uprooted today. Please. It's a very serious matter. I hope it has landed. So yeah, enjoy, enjoy your day.